In this lesson of PowerPointing with Jared, you're gonna learn how to make some flashcards. So it's pretty simple. It's a little bit involved of a process, simple but involved, that's all right, but you're gonna learn how to do this real quick and you can make this very effective for you in learning vocab. So if I want students to practice words by making these digital flashcards, and again, you can do this with a question on the front side, the answer on the back, you could put a picture on the front and you could have the word on the back. There are just many ways you can use this. So think of this functionally, how this can work for you, not exactly the way I'm showing it to you on my screen because I'm gonna show you some Spanish vocab. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with a simple shape. And as always, we just do a rectangle. So you go to insert, shape, rectangle. I draw my shape. I'm gonna make it about that size. And this is the, essentially the front of my flashcard. Um, I'm gonna type in the word dog, because I want them to learn how to say the word dog. Um, and then you can kind of fool around with some settings if you want. You can, I'm gonna get rid of the outline because I don't like it on there. And I'm gonna add a shadow because I like things that look three dimensional and I hate this font. So I'm gonna change it to uh, a good font that I like. Cool, dog. Um, and then I wanna duplicate this because I want students to, well, I want there to be a backside of this, right? So if I hold down control, and I click the shape and I drag it, I immediately have a copy of what I just did. And again, I can keep doing that. So now I have four. If I select them all, control, click, drag. Now I have eight. I don't need that many right now. I just need two. So this is gonna be the back side. So dog is the front side, el perro is the back side. That's gonna reveal the answer. So let's talk about how do we go about um, creating these animations and effects so that when I click the front side, it flips over. When I click the back side, it flicks flips back over to the front. Seems a little tedious, but it's, it's actually pretty easy. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna change the background color for this one, because I don't want them to be the same. So I know the front side is one color, the back side is the other. So if I go to dog, I need to give it an animation. So I go to animation in the top, and I'm going to add the an, uh, an exit, because I want it to go away, essentially. It's already gonna be there when the students look at it. I just want it to go away. So I'm gonna do um, collapse, and that's gonna create the effect of it um, kind of flipping over. You'll see that in a second, collapse. Hit okay. Let's go to El Perro, and let's add the entrance of expand. Nope, let's add stretch. They're very similar, I never know. So if you look at it in my animation pane, if I do play from, dog shrinks, El Perro kind of expands upon itself. If I place one over the other, or actually underneath, which doesn't matter, I can actually move this. Uh, if I just bring it to front, now dog's on top, perro is on the bottom, as you see. If I do it as a preview, it looks like you're flipping it over, which is a really cool effect, and that's what we want. But we don't have anything triggered, so we don't, we just have an animation right now, but it's not gonna do anything, because if I just, show it if I, I can't click, I mean, I, I can click on it, but now there's nothing because I haven't set it up right. But if I click the screen again, El Perro is gonna show up. So let's make this accurate. So I want dog to flip over when I click the, the shape that says dog. So we, we need to rename some things. If I go to select, I'm at, I'm at home. If I go to select, selection pane, I can rename this shape as dog. That's actually gonna be important because you're gonna have multiple flashcards on here. Let's rename this one as El Perro. So I know I have dog, and then my other shape is El Perro. Cool. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I want to trigger the animation of dog when I click dog. So go back to animations, make sure you have dog selected over here in your animation pane, and we're gonna go to trigger. And we want that to trigger on the click of dog, okay? So now if I look at my slideshow, see how I have an arrow, but the second I put that arrow over dog, now it means it's clickable, it can be dynamic. If I click it, it goes away. But now I have nothing because El Perro part has been assigned to just show up when I click the screen. We don't want that. So let's drag El Perro underneath dog. And we want El Perro to happen after. So now I've created this effect where if I click dog, it's automatically gonna do this, this animation sequence where dog disappears and El Perro shows up after that first animation is done. And that's it, I've just flipped a card. It's pretty simple. 
But now we have to do the same thing, but reverse. So let's go back to dog. Uh, actually, we're gonna start with El Perro because now we're, imagine that El Perro is what we see once we flipped it over. We're gonna add an animation. So we clicked over here before to do the exit and entrance animations. We don't wanna do that now because that, that will override what we already have. We're going to add a second animation to El Perro and we want, it, we want that to be an exit effect. We're going to do contract which I hope is what we did earlier. So now you see that we have a second animation and we can actually go ahead and trigger that on the click of El Perro. So now we have two triggered animations of the same shape that's working for us. Go ahead and click on dog. We're gonna add an animation. We want to add an entrance. So every shape is gonna have an exit and an entrance, but they can't be together. Um, and we want to stretch, was that right? Yeah. So if I go ahead and add this beneath, that one and I hit after previous. I don't know why that one's long. You can see that they're the same. It's just that dog is on top, perro is on top here and, 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 and vice versa for that. So now if I click dog, it's gonna show up as El Perro. If I click El Perro, it's going to, I gave it the wrong animation, that's why it was long. El Perro should be, uh, what was it? What did I select? Collapse? Yep. Sorry for this. Hopefully this will take care of it. On the click of El Perro. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's try that. Dog goes to Perro. Perro goes to dog. Bam, got it. So now I have one flashcard. Let's make multiple. If I select both, drag them along, this is, this is the best part of this. Once you have that set up, you're ready to go. So if I select both of those shapes and see how everything over here is selected, if I just click and drag this, I've created my second word. If I click and drag it again, I've created my third word. If I highlight all three of the shapes, which is now essentially six, click and drag, I now have six words ready to go. So again, if I select this one, it's gonna flip over. Select this one, it's gonna flip over. Now they, they work independently, but like they're individual. So that's a good thing. So now I can select this one and do cat. Let's change it to gato. Move it back up. I can select dog. I can change it to frog. And let's change that to la rana. So this is a good way for students to practice vocab. Um, maybe you don't want them to see the word. Oh, well, actually, we'll talk about that in a second. So again, you see cat becomes el gato, frog becomes la rana. It's pretty, pretty nice. Um, if I don't want the word dog here, but instead I want a picture of a dog, specifically my dog, I go to browse, where's my dog? There he is, hey Chewy. Um, and this, I wanted to do this because I wanted to show you guys that I've seen a lot of PowerPoints where people use shapes or they have pictures that are, that are squat. This is not what my dog looks like, he's not squished. But I can change that by selecting that shape of him and I can go to crop over here on the right, I'm in picture tools format, if I select crop and go to fill, it will take the shape that I have but expand the picture as it is normally into the shape. So you can see this border that I have is the actual size of the shape and now he looks like a normal dog. And I can even expand him a little more to fill the shape a little better. So he looks pretty good in this dog box. So that's that. And once I do this, the PowerPoint again, now they see a dog and they could say El Perro. So now it's just entirely, for my students, I want them to see the language as much as possible without avoiding the English. Um, so just put pictures. And you can do that with vocab that you have of whatever you're presenting. So this is a real quick way to make some vocab, some fun animations for students to practice on their own. And the neat thing is you can leave this up on Schoology all year. You can use it year after year. I have PowerPoint presentations like this that I've been using for years to get them to practice these words. And I just upload it every year and I don't have to worry about reinventing the wheel. So good luck with this. Let me know if you have any questions.